Welcome back. In the last video we started the engine, but I forgot to turn off the choke. Now without the choke, it's still running rich. I tried changing the main jet from uh, 130 to 110. It doesn't really help. There's a couple of things here though. First up, with the massive case volume, it will act rich. To the point where it's really lean, but still act rich. Because it will kind of act like a case leak. At least at low RPM, so that's something to keep in mind. Also, with the engine mounted this in this orientation, it will be mounted upside down in the bike. All the fuel that's falling out of the suspension due to the low um, low velocity and low turbulence in the at least low velocity in the crankcase, it stays in the case. It won't just be blown out through the cylinder. So um, I open it up and. poured out but also the tank was empty and I suspect the carb is leaking or the float the float valve is leaking so there's some issues here but we'll have to tear it down and see how things look now after I've been running it uh, like for a couple of minutes uh, four or five times now and um, better have a look and see that nothing's loose or like going nothing's going the wrong way couple of things first though I received this box of uh, end mills and um, collets from uh, Ronny Almgren today. Thanks man, thanks. Really means a lot. Especially for someone who's currently the owner of uh, three end mills. Which I haven't got holders for. Oh! On that note, I bought a set of uh, ER20 collets. So these are, I think, ER32. So I'll need to get some holders for ER32 too. But um... Yeah, so awesome man, thank you. This really means a lot, really. And some of them are new and um, they seem to be in good shape, the ones that aren't new. Not the sharpest, he said, but uh, definitely usable. And uh, maybe I'll teach myself to sharpen drill bits or uh, end mills. So yeah, thanks man, thanks. Speaking of the mill, I've uh, run several tests and each one seemed to get worse than the last. So I teared the machine down, I didn't bother filming, it's not really that interesting and there's a lot of good videos on the topic already, but I teared it down and um, turns out the oiler, the automatic oiler doesn't work, or it does work but uh, not automatic, you can like, run it manually. So that's what I'm doing now and, um, and I just cleaned up everything and um, it seems like lack of lubrication was uh, um, a big problem. and. Um, yeah, so now, like the last test I ran, we're within 0.05 millimeters to, um, to dimension and um, to spec. And the gibs aren't really tight at all yet, so um, I'll tighten up the gibs a little bit more and play around with it. Might be tool deflection. I ran the finishing pass at um, 0.1 millimeters. Could try 0.05, see if that helps. But um, yeah, it works, works better than before. I also 3D printed a new nozzle for the coolant, I'll show you, but it's the first iteration and it, uh, it's not perfect, it hits the collets, but um, yeah, it's probably better than the last setup. Seems to be fine. There was a lot of uh, grey stuff in the oil there. 
uh, probably aluminium and uh, there's but there's a pretty even wear pattern around the piston and I think it's down to my shitty honing job and uh, and it's probably not perfectly round the bore same compression as before the testing uh, relative compression it's uh, it's showing 75 psi on the gauge that's not correct the gauge isn't accurate but it should be accurate for um, for relative measurements and um, it's kind of low compared to what I'm used to seeing on that gauge I usually see around 100 psi for a 50 cc comparable engine but I haven't tested it on a 50 cc comparable engine in a while and it might be going bad it's a cheap Chinese piece of crap the piston skirt is uh, has not come loose the clearance between the ring and the ring land is the same the ring is not bound and uh, the gap has not become excessively large let's have a look at the carb I suspect the float needle is not seating properly and it's leaking that's not the carb I'm going to use though it's this one it's more compact immune to vibration this one is certainly isn't if you've seen my earlier videos you've seen my struggles with uh, float ball foaming at really high rpm there's this high pitched uh, vibration that just foams up the bowl no matter what you do it seems at least no matter what i've done before you suggest i go with something better than this velbro it is just for starting and bringing it up to rpm so this is nice and small and compact perfect for for my application and also this reed valve is supposed to be in there now there's um, uh, a different one because i uh, destroyed the reeds for this one but new reads. I'm hesitant to try this yet though because we won't know what solved the issues and the issue now is it is running far too rich even though I jetted it down didn't make a difference and um, I suspect the float ball <laughs> Sealing properly could be the float height is too high. That's a possibility. So it's uh, it it overflows before the, the valve uh, closes. There is too much fuel going in there. I'm pretty sure about it because I've always run these PWK carbs with fairly high idle jets, and uh, if I'm correct. This will probably be a more normal sized idle jet. Like I've I've run a pretty large idle jet to to make them not run away and run lean at idle. And this is a, a 45, and that's usually for my 50 cc engines with large carbs. Like this uh, is it a 28 millimeter carb. Like usually I'll have to run at least a 55 or. 60 something like that to to have it idle properly and this one idles beautifully so um so there's more fuel coming in there than than what the carb is intended intended to deliver i'm pretty sure about it let's talk about the dyno i'm building here on my home built inertia chassis dyno i've got the the parts so far for my new dyno build i was going to go for a magnetic powder break order from China then I realized a large enough magnetic powder break from China isn't that expensive but it's heavy and shipping will be more expensive than the, the thing itself and I've al already got this um, this hydraulic pump so um, going hydraulic pump break for uh, for the dyno so um, I've got some fat aluminium uh, t-slot extrusion here this long piece and also another one up there which uh, I salvaged from uh, from the kitchen uh, when we moved here uh, was um, there were uh, the father who lived here was uh, disabled and uh, they had a kitchen that could actually like on hydraulic cylinders lower itself down to the ground so he could reach stuff that was pretty cool and a lot of cool parts from that um, kitchen setup so anyways got these aluminium extrusion parts which I will use as the, the main frame hydraulic pump for the load a load sensor to measure the torque the engine is uh, applying to this uh, load rpm sensor and the brains from your I'm really excited about testing this uh, system out 
think I've got a tank and the and the hoses and uh, and the valve sorted. What I need is uh, some axles and some um, some pulleys. I think I'm going to go um, toothed belt drive. This pump can take 3,000 RPM. My engine will spin at 20,000 plus. So we'll have to make a gear reduction to keep uh, keep the pulleys from being excessively large. I'm going to do a two-stage reduction. So a jack shaft and then to the to the load. As I have the CNC machine and it's starting to work now, I think actually I will give it a try machining my own pulleys and just buy the belt, a belt to suit. So uh, I think that's that might actually be faster than um, ordering from abroad now. So yeah, it's it's not much to it. It is the electronics are here, the load is here. All we need to do is make some bracketry and. Uh, and some bearing housings for the jack shaft and to hold this pump and then the lever arm and to mount the load sensor too so yeah yeah and I need this to be able to test the secondary intake because it needs to be under load and there's no point in trying to tune an engine that you can't put under load especially when it's meant to stay at constant load constant rpm which this system will provide that's why i'm building this instead of using the inertia dyno i've changed my mind we're testing it with the different reed valve and the pumper carb not the most scientific way i know but uh, it gives me the opportunity to mount the engine upside down in the vise and avoid the pooling of, um, of fuel in the crankcase